All right, so this video will be on the intermediate part. Uh, in this case, it's a propane tank. Um, as you can see right here, it gives you a lot of this stuff right here. Uh, if I recall it correctly, I don't think this mass is correct, so I'm still expecting you to find your mass and import that into the Schoology assessment. And then when you're done, you'll import this part or upload it into Schoology also so I can check on it, okay? Now looking at this, really the emphasis here, and I get a lot of kids, I'll mess this up, is I'll try to just do a simple cylinder extrude. The issue you have here, though, is that <clears throat> this is bowed out and bowed in, okay? Or it's kind of angled out and angled in. And that's very hard to do with a, an extrusion in a shell. So what I'm going to do is actually use the second page, and we're going to go ahead, and we're just going to simply come in here, and I'm just going to split this down the middle and create this outside silhouette right here. And then what we'll do is we'll revolve it around and then add on our bottom piece down here. Okay, um, we can either add that on, we could actually revolve it too, but in this case, I'll just create the base or the main piece, then add on this base, and then we'll finish off with the top half shell with the holes punched in. All right, uh, add our material, and that'll be about it. This is not overly complex of a part, so I'm going to take a few steps. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to do is start basically on the front plane, I'm going to draw a vertical center line. Um, and then create this half of the silhouette of this part, and then we'll revolve it around that line. So that'll be the first step. So let me move this over. Let me go in here. This part is metric. So I am going to go File, New, Metric, OK. Starting on the front plane with a new sketch, I'm going to create a vertical center line. Let's start here and just create a vertical. It does not matter the length. I just want to make sure that it's vertically straight up and down, and it is. Okay, now going over and doing the side view or that cutaway view, detail C, I'm going to basically start with a line down here at the bottom, pulling out to my right, pull, create kind of a curve. Okay, kind of pulling a line up, kind of angling it back in. Pull away, create a second curve, pull this in, pull away, pull a little curve. I'm going to kind of get up here so you can see this. Small curve here, pulling straight up and stopping right there. Now, I'm not going to draw the inside of this. I'm going to uh, offset that when I'm ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is start working with some of the dimensions I see up here. So the first thing I want to do, start looking at some of the details here. I see from here, a couple things. Okay, it looks like the uh, uh, 25. So I see right here, it is 25 from here to here. I see that in detail B. That is 25 millimeters with this radius right here at 12. Okay, I see this radius over here at, at 45, which is big. Okay. Um, this angle between here and here is going to be 92.5. And I will show that in decimal form so you can see that. I see a little bit of a bump right there. That tells me something. This tells me that this is not tangent. So I'm going to add that tangency right there. Okay. Um, then I'm looking at the overall height of this. I got to come back up towards the top. Uh, I'm going to kind of work on this from the top of this part here. This is going to be that letter B. And then letter B, in this case, is going to be 435 millimeters in height. Okay, and yes, that did mess up. And we end up losing some things here. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to adjust. Okay, this right here. Obviously, this has got to be a little bit smaller. This and this should be tangent anyways. So I'm going to add that tangency there. And it looks like, in this case, what I may have to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete. I hate when that happens. So I'm just going to pull this back. And I'm just going to add a tangent arc between here and here. Okay. Make these two tangent. All right. And now a couple things I'm going to look at here. Um, the overall width of this. Um, so, for instance, this right here from this point to this bottom line is going to be 435 divided by 2. Okay, like so, so. This angle here between this and this is going to be 
okay, 92.5, and I'll show that in decimal form so you can see that. All right, so there's getting somewhat of the shape, all right, the uh, overall, let me see here, is it down there? I'm um, looking at this, and that's there, that key is there. I'm just kind of looking at some of these pieces here. That's the bottom. Just again, I see a four millimeter offset, uh, 92.5. So it looks like the uh, going up to the top view, oops, the radius or the diameter from this corner to this line is going to be, and if you pull towards your left, it gives you diameter. This is radius. That dimension is going to be letter A, and letter A for this will be 390. Okay. Um, I'm looking at uh, the overall height of this little bump up piece is going to be 20 millimeters. So oops, from here, let me go up to the top. Here to here is going to be 20. That defines it there. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what else I have left to do. I've got that dimension there. That at 25. Let me just see what's moving. Okay, that. Hold on here. Um, oh, the arc. Sorry. This, this arc up here and this arc down here are equal to each other. Okay. Now, by doing that, this gives me a defined outside sketch. Okay, the thickness of this though is four millimeters. So what I'm gonna do right now is do an offset, four millimeters, and I'm gonna click on this outside edge here. I'm gonna say select chain and reverse direction because I want the four millimeters to go to the inside. I'm gonna hit my check mark and then I'm gonna finish by closing this up. I'm gonna add a quick four millimeter dimension there. That's why it's blue. Okay, and check. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom here and also close this figure here. And by doing that now, I have a blue filled, means that I have a closed figure that now I can revolve around this line. So going to my features, I'm going to do Evolve Boss Base. And there you go. You know, I'm actually pick that line. If not, highlight it and pick it 360 degrees and check mark. Okay. Now, I'm going to add the material on this, and the material for this is a 1060 alloy aluminum. I'm going to right click, and that, fortunately, is right here in the middle of this bar. So there gives me my 1060 alloy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this bottom face. Okay, I'm going to start a new sketch and do a space bar and a normal tip. Okay, going down to the bottom, I see two circles here. Um, Finding these right here. Uh, those circles, it looks like, are going to be slightly offset. Uh, 12 millimeters. This is an odd way they do this, but it's going to be 12 millimeters offset from this edge. So I'm going to go reverse direction, 12 millimeters. Okay, so that's 12 millimeters in. I'm going to hit check mark. And then I'm going to offset this circle here, 3 millimeters, and reverse. Okay, and check. All right, so now if I'm looking at this, what I'll do is it's because it doesn't have that three in there. I'm just going to dimension it real quickly to 270, whatever it is, and that is good. Okay, so there is that number there. All right now, again, this is not normally the best way to do this. Usually you would actually have a measurement, the size of a circle, but this will work. All right, now from here, I have to extrude this out 30 millimeters. So I'm going to go to features. Extruded boss space, 30 millimeters, and hit my check mark. Okay, so there's that base. I'm going to repeat this on the top. Okay, so I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to highlight this face right here. I'm going to go ahead and start with a sketch. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to highlight this face and offset that circle 12 millimeters inside. It's the same as the bottom, reverse. I'm going to hit my check mark. I'm going to reverse it or offset it again three millimeters inside, three, and reverse. But this one, I got to do one more thing to it. I need a 55 millimeter uh, cutout. Okay, so or actually it ends up being 110 when it's done. So I'm going to take a center line and kind of just draw it straight out to my right horizontally. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take a line and I'm going to oops I'm going to draw a line from this center out of this angle. I'm going to draw a second one from the center. Ah, dang it. To this center at this angle. And then I'm going to take a measurement between here and here of 55 degrees. And from here to here. Oops, not the end point, sorry. From this line here to this angle line here will also be 55 degrees. Okay, I'm also going to dimension whatever this is, and that's fine. I'm just going to hit my check mark. Okay, now. What I have to do is I have to take my trim tool and I'm going to trim that piece off there and this piece off up there along with this part of the circle. Okay, so now that's closed. Okay, I'll get it defined in just a moment. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to get rid of this piece here, that piece there, get rid of this part of the circle and that part of the circle. Okay, now the reason these two are in blue is because they were at one point they were coincident with this center. So I'm going to add that coincident mate there and it will go to full defined again. So I'm going to highlight the line. And then I'm going to hold my control key in this center point and we are going to do coincident. Okay, so this is what this sketch looks like. Now again, same thing here. We're going to actually extrude this up 100 millimeters. So this is going to go 100 and check. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead at this point I need to add a fillet on the corner so I'm going to go here to features and fillet. These are going to have a radius of 30 millimeters and I'm going to fill it off that point right there and this point right here and hit my check mark. Okay, so now that's done. All right, now I'm going to come over here. And I'm actually going to go to my front plane. And actually, in this case, I'm, yeah, that's fine. I can go to my front plane, or I'm actually going to go to my right plane. In this case, I'm going to start a new sketch. No, I'm going to go to my front plane. I'm going to start a new sketch. Oops, front plane. Oops, am I on my front plane? All right, go to normal two. Turn that off. Go to normal two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to draw basically a sketch where there's a line pull back and actually this is dumb I shouldn't do it this way I'm gonna use get rid of that I'm gonna use my straight slot tool because that's all this is it's a straight slot left left and up okay now the dimension for this is down in the second page under detail B I'm gonna take the dimension of this um, me right down the center so let me uh, hold on here I'm gonna take this from here to here it's gonna be a 36 is that right um, the distance from here to here it's gonna be what they call 86 I'm gonna do in this case well I'm gonna get rid of this one here real quick oops actually what I'm gonna do is highlight this and we're gonna do what's called uh, leaders or Nope, I gotta get rid of this. Sorry. I'm gonna dimension this one more time from arc to arc. Pull that up, and then I'm gonna go and check. I'm gonna go over to leaders, and we're gonna do max and max under the R condition. This is supposed to be 86 millimeters. Okay. Um, the height of this is going to be from top to here. Will be oops, dimension here will be from here to here is. From the top, it's going to be 50. From the center to this top line will be 50. Uh, I'm going to do what's called a temporary axis because this is supposed to be locked to that point right there. So this point in here will be coincident, and that fully defines this figure. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go ahead and I'm just going to extrude cut one way. And there's going to be a reason why. And I'll explain in just a second. So I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to do a through all. And check. Okay, now what I'm going to do is under features, I'm going to go to linear pattern, circular pattern. 
I want the direction to revolve around this temporary axis right here. I would like three of these holes cut equally spaced. And the feature I want to basically pattern will be this extruded cut. Okay, and I want three, not 360, uh, three will be, excuse me, it is going to be uh, not 360, was it 360 minus 110, which is what? Uh, 360 minus 110 is 250. Okay, um, and that is not going to do it. Oof. Uh, what is this angle here? It's not 360. I want three of them. Equal spacing. Um, if that's 360 minus 110, it's 250. Oh, wait, you know what? I want three of them over 270. Not 27. 270. No, or is it 180? It's 180. My, my fault. 180. Okay. Because they're all three on the vertical axis. So three, 180. All right. If you go here and hit the check mark, there are your final cuts. Okay. So at this point, this part is done. I'm going to come up to the eyeball here and turn my temporary axes off. Okay. I'm going to do a quick file save as. I'm going to save this to my desktop here or your folder for SOLIDWORKS or whatever you're doing on your desktop. I'm going to call this um, with caps lock on. I'm going to name this propane tank underscore my last name. I want you to save this and then I want you to go ahead and find the mass for this. Okay, so you're going to go to evaluate mass properties. All right, uh, my mass is different than their mass and I think mine is more correct. Well, how they got there is I'm not sure. But I want you to find what your mass is and put it in. Okay. Um, going through this, I believe that was off before. So this, I think this is correct. Um, but who knows? Okay. This is a hollowed out part, just so you understand it is. I can go to the section view so you can see this. And you can see that it is actually shelled out and it is an actual hollowed propane tank. Okay. So at this point, I am done with this. So I'm going to get out of that, close that section off, go ahead and make sure I save this. And at this point, the propane tank is done. Make sure you get the mass properties into the assessment and upload this into Schoology. If any questions, email me. Otherwise, good luck.